Gospels this morning. Uh, and I encourage you to bring God's Word with you every time you come to church. Uh, that, is, that, that should be a, a, a something that we can underline, something that we can highlight. Uh, I know some of you all take notes. I know some of you, uh, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe even possibly, maybe even you use your uh, your tablet and you're able to uh, take notes while you're using that tablet. Uh, but I encourage you to bring God's word with you to read it, uh, to study it, and to learn from it. Amen. Uh, and let's turn to Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21. We see here today that Paul is willing. Uh, when we see that word ready, it means he's willing. In other words, he's saying, I'm willing or I'm ready. You know, we need to ask ourselves from time to time within ourselves, are we ready? Are we ready today? Are we ready to serve the Lord with gladness? That's what he teaches us to do in his word is to serve the Lord with gladness. Are we ready to suffer persecution for his sake? Now we may not see the persecution that they would see in China or Pakistan. We may not see the persecution that they would see maybe in Somalia or some of these other countries uh, that are dictators and run by those uh, very communists, very much controlling uh, leadership. We may not see those, but yet we may see some sort of persecution. Persecution. You may not get the job you want because people know that you're a Christian. You may not, uh, you may not uh, uh, be able to have the things or do be able to do the things that you need to do because uh, uh, that you are a Christian and you are a follower and a, a believer and, a, and, a, and you trust in the Most High God. We may face per persecution, but in the life that we live today... I'm not saying it won't come in the future, but in the life that we live today, more than likely we will not face the, the persecution such as Paul did, or such as Peter did, or many of these others, or Stephen, that were martyr for the faith of Jesus Christ. But as we stand here today, we want to be mindful of our time, Acts chapter 21 Acts chapter 21 and verses 12 as we stand here this morning. If you're physically able to, please stand with us. But in Acts chapter 21 and start reading in verse 12. And when we heard these things, we both and they that, uh, that, uh, that, they that of the place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What means ye to weep? And to break mine heart, for I am for I am ready, not for I am ready for I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when and when he when when he was not only persecuted, he ceased saying, "The will of the Lord be done." In verses 15 it reads, And after these days we took up our carriage and went out, went up to Jerusalem. Father, we ask today, Lord, for your blessing. Lord, we ask today, Lord, for your guidance. Lord, as we read and as Lord, as we seek your wisdom here this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. It's a wonderful blessing to be woken up by the Holy Spirit in the morning. This morning about 5.15, I woke up and I thought, boy, it seemed like I've slept uh, 10 hours, 12 hours. And really it was only probably about four and a half to five hours that I'd slept. And, and I started praying for this morning's service. I started asking the Lord to make my life willing vessel for Him, a ready vessel, something that is useful for His purpose and for His grace. I don't want to be a vessel of dishonor. I don't want to be a vessel of something that is, use, that something that is, that is useless for Him, but I want to be useful for Him. And as we look at this, let's look at our life today. Are we a willing vessel for His purpose and for His, for His will in our lives? Paul says, I'm ready or I'm willing. No matter what the case, not just to be bound only, but to die. He says, now listen, if you look over in, in, in chapter 16 and chapter 17, I, I believe that you can see where Paul had already been fast in stocks. He had already been, uh, he had already been whooped. Uh, he had already been beaten. 
He had already been placed in the, in the, in the, in the inner prison, thrust into inner prison is what God's Word says, uh, literally thrown, uh, literally beaten, uh, half to death, and with the stripes on, that, uh, on, on an old dungeon floor, he was sitting there and instead of uh, saying, poor, poor, pitiful me, instead of saying, where's the God uh, that I serve, he started praising the God that he served because he knew he was there and Paul says, I'm willing to be put in bonds for your sake, for the gospel's sake. So the gospel can go out and the gospel can be preserved and the gospel can be presented to a lost and dying world. He was ready to be placed in bonds. Bonds, let's look in verse 13 that we read here. And so Paul answered, what, what mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only. Not to be bound only. He knew what was taking place in his life. So he knew, he says, now listen, I am ready. If, if this is what it takes for the gospel message to go out, and if this is what it takes for me to present the Jesus Christ that met me on the road to Damascus, if this is what it takes for me to be placed in bonds and to be, and to be slain for, the, uh, for the, the glory of God, so be it. That's what I want to do. I'm willing to do it. You know, so many people today talk a good game. Oh, yeah, I can do this, and oh, yeah, I can be a part of this. And, but when it really gets down to it, and it really comes to brass tacks, oh, now, pre now, preacher, I'm just not too sure about that. That's not being willing or ready. There's going to be times in our Christian life that things are going to come upon us, and we must prepare our life today to be ready tomorrow. We may be able to prepare our life today to witness and lead someone to the Lord tomorrow. When's, let, me, let me just stop here just for a moment. When's the last time we led someone to the Lord? That's more of an old me than an amen, isn't it? When is the last time we invited someone to church? Could be an old me instead of an old man, and then said an amen, right? When is the last time that we just dedicated a certain amount of time, phones were left off, uh, uh, you know, uh, no one can get to us, we went somewhere, we, we deliberately, intentionally just commune with the Lord. When's the last time? You want to be ready for the next time God allows us to have an opportunity? Then we have to do that. We have to make our life a vessel of honor to be real, willing and to be ready to serve Him. We see here today, he says, now listen, I'm not just willing to be put into bonds. I'm not willing just to be, just to be put into, uh, into a prison somewhere, but I'm, I'm willing to die. I am willing to die for the cause of Christ. Today, we have churches and pulpits full of comfortable Christians and pastors. I didn't leave you. I didn't leave me out. We have churches. We have Sunday school rooms. We have uh, we have uh, uh, we have denominations that are full of people that just kind of got in a groove, and we just think, boy, we're just doing everything right. Uh, we're doing what we're supposed to do, but they've just done it for so long. They just comfortable, and they really don't know why they're doing it. It's just kind of like an old milk cow. Twice a day, they're going to go to the barn. It's. Let's not get comfortable. Paul says, now listen, I'm, there's, not anything, there's not anything comfortable about what Paul was doing here. He says, now listen, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to preach. I am ready to minister. Listen, I, I've got these kind of all out of whack, but he says, I'm ready to die at any moment for the cause and the glory of Christ for what he's done for me. Let's look again at verse 15. In the latter it says, I'm, I'm not ready, I'm ready not only to be bound, but to die at Jerusalem for who? For the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm ready to die for His sake. And we see that many times as you look over his life and you see how many times that he had been persecuted. You see how many times that, that he had been uh, cast out. You see how many times that he was wandered in the deep or wandered in the, in the ocean. You see how many times that the time that he was snake bit. And I can remember when I was Emily's age, maybe a little older. I got my, one of my first uh, real jobs, I guess. And while I was working that job, I can remember this. Big old copperheads 
face and head striking my boot. I woke up for two weeks straight with nightmares, seeing that, that snake going. Somebody said, you kill it? No, I was running another way. <laughs> Come on. But here he is. He shook the snake off. He's gathering his firewood. You know, he's getting everything. And, and out of the wood come a snake and, and latched onto his arm. And he just shook it off in the fire. Went on about his business. Everybody looking at Paul thinking, is he going to die? And when they didn't die, they knew that there was something real about Paul. Now, now Jesus, God could have just let him go on to glory that day. But his time hadn't come yet. Our time may not, our time may be fulfilled today, or it may be 20 years from today, or 50 years from today, but we must be ready when that time comes. You see these churches and these people in Ukraine that when the war first started over there, they were meeting and gathering in tunnels where subways would run, and they would sing. I didn't understand what they were singing. I didn't know the words that they were singing, Bill, but I could sure feel the Spirit about what they were singing about. And as they were singing in that subway tunnel, singing to a God that maybe they didn't understand why their country was being overrun by a tyrant. Maybe they didn't understand why their country was being decimated by the bombs and these innocent people were there. But yet they were still singing to a God that they knew loved them. God loves you today. He gave His very best for you. He gave His very best for me. You hear the story of Columbine, one of the first real uh, school shootings that uh, that we can remember of, right, in in our day and time. And and those, uh, those those, uh, those animals would go around and say, are you a Christian? And they would shoot them just for being a Christian. Those young people were willing to lay down their life. Not for their glory or accolade, but because they knew what Christ had done for them. It may come to the point, Brother Howard, that we may have to say, yes, I'm a Christian. And how do we prepare for that? We prepare for that by stealing away in a quiet spot. We prepare for that by reading God's Word. We make ourselves ready by readily reading God's Word. So we see here today, He says, and I'm not just to be bound or not just to die, but I'm, I'm ready to preach. I'm, I'm ready to preach what He wants me to do. Over in Romans chapter 1 and verses 15, uh, you know, it tells and it proclaims what He is and what He's done. So as, so, as, so as much is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. He says, I'm ready. I'm ready to preach the gospel. You say, well, you know, this kind of leaves me out, preacher. I'm just going to sit down right here. I'm not a preacher. Ha, ha, ha. But you've not been saved to sit down. You've not been saved to go on the sidelines You have been saved to get in the fight. And we can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Whatever your station in life is. I remember preacher Cutsaw would say, he says, I'm in the sunset years of my life. You may be able to say here today, I'm in the sunset years of my life. Boy, isn't the sunset the most prettiest part of the day? Amen. You may say, well, preacher, I'm in the... You still have an opportunity you still have an opportunity to to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. There may be someone here today, there may be a young man, or or there may be a middle-aged man, or or senior citizen that that says, you know, I feel the need for God calling me to preach. I'm going to step out. There's no age limit on when you can preach. You may be retired. And God may speak to your heart and say, it's your time to preach. I want you to preach for me. You may, be a young, you may be a young man here today and you're trying to figure out things in your life and you're trying to understand and what God wants you to do. And he may be saying, this is what I need for you to do. I need you to preach. Are you willing to do that? 
Christian, are we willing to pass out a track? Are we willing to invite people? Are we willing to be an example for those ones that are around us? There is a great responsibility for that. To the preachers that fill pulpits. It's not a haphazardly, or should it be, a haphazardly attempt to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. It's an awesome responsibility. And for someone to think that they can get up in this pulpit or stand behind a lectern in, in, a, in a Sunday school class or in a children's church, well, Tim, they're just, they're just children. So what? They're just children's church. Whatever we put our hand to, let's do it with all of our might. He says, I'm ready because even though the responsibility is great, I'm ready to preach. We also see here today that he was ready to minister. He was ready to minister. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he tells the, he, he tells the account in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, long about verses 14. I, I, and we see here today as we think and as we look, Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. And willing, uh, and, 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 and I am and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. In other words, he says, I'm coming so that I can just be some sort of blessing to you. That's what I want to be. This past week, I won't mention any names, I received a phone call. It's one of the sweetest phone calls I have gotten in so many times. I, I, I don't, I just, preacher, I just want to encourage you. Just you and your wife, I just want to lift you up. That's an opportunity. And that saint took that opportunity to, to lift her pastor up. To lift her pastor's wife up. That's, that's what he's teaching about and preaching about here. You may be here and you may be saying, well, you know, I can't go to Brazil or I can't go on truth and peace, but I want to send these children over there. That's, that's in a roundabout, that's ministering. I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't go to Kodak, Tennessee, or I can't go to Withful, Virginia, or I can't go, uh, you know, uh, to, to the Virgin Islands, or I can't go to Africa, or I, I can't go to Japan, but, you know, I, I can... I can pray for those people over there and I can let them know that I'm praying. For, not for my pat on the back, just so they know that they're not by themselves. Sister Pam Crank, she ministers to those young ladies that come in to the Hope Center. Ask Sister Pam how many babies have not been aborted because of someone ministering to them. The greatest... I believe that's the greatest mission. I believe that's one of the greatest mission fields that we have in our community. I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care, you know, what. I, it's, it's, it's good. And she's ministering. Here Paul is. She, he says, I know the task. Do you remember where Paul says, you know, uh, three times was I, uh, you know, uh, three times was I in the deep. You know, thrice was I stoned. And he says, above all this, the cares of the church. Isn't that right, pastors? Deacons? Well, Sam was a deacon at his church where he ministered there in, in, in Georgia. You understand the cares of the church. You understand that it's not just lightly. Paul says, I'm willing to do what the Lord wants me to do in my life. Are we willing today? You know, when I preached this going up the road, it took me an hour and ten minutes. It's not, Brother Al, it's not going to be that long today. But are we willing? Are we ready? Are, are we ready to step out for the cause of Christ? I don't care what your abilities are or your inabilities. But the greatest thing that we first must do is to be ready to meet the Lord thy God. The writer over in the Old Testament, it says, prepare ye to prepare to meet the Lord thy God. Prepare. Be ready. 
The Bible teaches us for ministers and the Bible teaches us for, for Christians to preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. We must be ready. But the greatest thing that we must do is to give our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must be ready to leave this world and step out into eternity and be ushered into heaven. Are we ready for that today? You know, I can preach today about uh, being ready to preach, being ready to suffer, being ready to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to proclaim the goodness, to be ready to minister, to be ready to, pardon me, to be ready to die. But we have to start before we can finish. And we must start with Jesus Christ being the Lord and Master of our life. How about you today? Are you ready to meet Him? Or you say, preacher, I'd just like a little more time. As our musicians come, you go over here in the cemetery, We've got some that lived a very good age. And you read sometimes in, the, in God's Word, a good old age. You, you have some that, that were just in the sunrise time of their, their life. They didn't even see the midday. They didn't even see, uh, they didn't even see the break time. You know, break time when, when I worked was about 9 o'clock. They didn't, in, in life's measure, they didn't even see break time. <clears throat> They didn't see the sunset years. They were called away very rapidly. We could be called away very rapidly and we must be prepared for our future in eternity. The Bible teaches us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible teaches us that we must be, he told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he says, ye must be born again to enter into heaven. Nicodemus said, how can I, well, how can I enter into this, how can I be born again? Can I enter into the second time? He says, I'm old. I mean, that's, that's, that's just, and, and Christ said, no, just, just wait a minute, Nicodemus. You must be born again. You must have that to enter in. To the joys of the Lord. You read over in Matthew chapter 7, along about verse 21, and then, and then some will say, Lord, didn't we, do, didn't we do that wonderful works? Didn't we prophesy in my name and do wonderful Didn't we even cast out de devils? And he says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. <clears throat> they thought they were ready. You know, if I keep telling myself I'm six foot tall, in my mind I can believe I'm six foot tall, but really I'm not. There are a lot of people today that says, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, and they've said it for 40 and 50 and 60 plus years, and they've said it so much they believe it. And the reality of it all, they've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they're missing out. They are not ready. How about you today? Father, I love you today. Lord, I ask your will to be done here this morning. Lord, I know today that, Lord, all of us Christians must be ready at a moment's notice to tell about you and tell what you've done for us. But most importantly, we must be ready to leave this world in a moment's notice. We must be ready to, to be called away. And Lord, I pray today if there's someone here that's not ready to step out into eternity, Lord, may they be ready before they leave today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we all stand, please. As our musicians play.